What's going on everyone? It's Jaronism back with another video for you today. Going to talk about Elon Musk and his subsidy grabbing fraud company who fakes everything from launches, satellite deployments, orbits, and of course, landings. So to start, not sure if you've seen this video by ScienceNet named seven times Elon Musk went next level genius. Now you'd expect some amazing eye-opening revelations or some game-changing perspectives and let's just say they're not there. He comes across as a high school student who's basically just rambling. So we decided to spruce it up a little. And I did need to say one other thing. I did say that uh, everything that Elon Musk puts out is fake, and I forgot that's everything but his toupee. Unfortunately, that won't get him to Mars. Neither will lies or taxpayers' money, but it will get him a spot on next level genius the Jaronism way. Jaronism presents Next Level Genius. Next Level Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. In Love with Edison for some strange reason guy. Mr. In Love with Edison for some strange reason guy. As far as role models, um... Pick anybody but yourself, please. You know, it's obviously some of the, the obvious role models. I think Edison was certainly a role model. Um, Probably one of the biggest role models. Um, did you study <coughs> Yeah, I read books about him. Absolutely. Sure, you did, you little liar. Um, and, um, and it's an interesting contrast, like Edison versus Tesla, because interesting, you know, the, the car company is called Tesla. Um, and the reason it's called Tesla is because we use an AC induction motor, which is an architecture that Tesla developed. Um, and the guy probably deserves a little more play than he gets in current society. Um, but on balance, I'm a bigger fan of Edison than Tesla, uh, because Edison brought his stuff to market and made those inventions accessible to the world, whereas Tesla did, didn't really do that. You like um, him because he sold out. So uh, that's, so he'd, he'd certainly be a big one. Um, and uh, you know, I, th I think, you know, the, the, the great technologists, uh, you know, Steve Jobs at Apple, um, Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Uh, he wants to depopulate the world with vaccines. I would choose another one. I actually thought Disney was a pretty good innovator. Oh, great, a Freemason. Thank you, Mr. I love Edison for some strange reason, I. And so let's start with some SpaceX nonsense. This is the CRS-10 that was landing, and I just wanted to point out a few things. First, I love the uh, plastic fins that uh, somehow survived the re-entry into the atmosphere. And if you take a look at the picture on the right, you can see it's dark and gloomy and gray. And then in a second there, you got blue skies and white clouds. And you can see there as it lands, somehow we're supposed to believe that those fins can steer a rocket that weighs 20,000 pounds as it falls back to Earth. I also find this part funny. Look at the uh, thrusters there on the top. I'm not sure what they're called, but they're the steering mechanism, and you'll see him squirting right now for no reason. The rocket's already landed. I guess it's kind of like a showing off thing. I don't know, looks pretty CGI to me. And I'm not the only one. Actually, uh, somebody asked Elon Musk on Twitter recently, is there a reason that most of the landings appear to have been at night so far? And Elon Musk responded, it's much easier to do the CGI that way. So, of course, everyone rushed to say how much he was kidding. Everyone, of course, except Elon Musk. And again, I'll remind you, as I always do, to do your own research, make up your own mind. By the end of this video, if you still believe in SpaceX, more power to you. I guess that propels you up into the next level, like next level genius. Jaronism presents Next Level Genius. Next Level Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Impress the Asian with our subpar math skills. Mr. Impress the Asian with our subpar math skills. Um, and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, 80 hour, 80 to 100 hour weeks every week. Where do you find time to be a dirtbag? And then that, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. The weakest attempt to get into a girl's pants that I've ever seen. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40-hour work weeks and you're putting in 100-hour work weeks, then you're doing the same thing. You know that in, in one year you will achieve what they achieve. You, you, you will achieve Math has never in been my four months what it takes them 
a year. Thank you, Mister. You didn't impress anyone with your math skills, guy. All right, moving right along, let's look at JC Sat 14. Pay close attention here as we look underneath the rocket, and you'll see what I call render issues. And then after that, we'll begin to see some of the magic as it unfolds. First, they'll announce what happens, and then the crowd goes buck wild. Although it should be noted that the crowd is simply SpaceX employees. You cannot go watch a launch like you'd think. You can apply for a tour or go with an employee, but uh, please don't think these people are all there to celebrate a satellite being deployed that will end up charging them $100 a month for TV service. So, isn't it a convenient lie when the video goes out, and yet people still worship Elon and SpaceX, a company that has used $4.9 billion from the American government and the taxpayers, and yet people still think they're private. Now, as is normally convenient, you'll see the video here shut off just at the right time, and then when it returns, then you'll get to see the second stage, the rocket firing, and you'll get to see the fairing separation, and people act a fool, pretending like what they see is actually in space. Let's watch. Hey, can see this. What's really sad is that this crowd continues to cheer over these verbal confirmations. They don't even get to see anything. And even more sad than that is the fact that people can't see that this is an awful hoax. They get 20-something millennials who care more about whether or not their shirt sits atop their belt than to pay attention to the hoax that they're presenting as real. And you'll see we get to watch this glowing red nozzle on the screen now that couldn't possibly look more unreal. I'm sure the metal holds its structure and integrity as it burns red and hot. And from the front end of the rocket there is the fairing separation. Uh, you can see the JT sat there for a brief moment there as well. The thing is, people never ask the question of why are we given such crappy camera angles, such crappy views? What is this view anyway? Well, let's listen to the guy they got from the bowling alley who uh, does know the word nominal. He'll tell us what's up. T plus five minutes, everything continues to go nominal. You hear that call out occasionally, something that we love to hear, as I've said before at SpaceX. Give you an update on the Falcon 9 trajectory. I'm looking at the uh, plot map on my monitor here, we're tracking down pretty much the middle of the predicted trajectory. Now we've headed somewhat due east out of Cape Canaveral, for our initial parking orbit, we don't really change the inclination of the orbit, so we'll shoot eastward. There will be a second burn a little bit later on that we uh, plan to bring you in the webcast. That'll be the burn that takes us to the geosynchronous transfer orbit. The first burn is into the parking orbit. You heard the call there, stage two propulsion is nominal. And the update of the trajectory is it's pretty much tracking down the middle of the trajectory. It's an impressive update. All they do is listen to one man who's talking on a loudspeaker. Everything that goes on comes directly from an audio cue. Power, power telemetry remain nominal. Things continue to remain nominal still on both stages. Always nominal. You'll notice that this guy is just listening in for audio updates. He literally knows nothing. He's just listening in. You'll notice now he'll be listening for the entry burn. Wouldn't this show on his computer? Well, nope. He waits for the audio confirmation major event about to come up that we're going to listen for is the entry burn of the first stage. We'll light three engines for about 15 seconds. Let's listen in for a minute and maybe we'll hear it. Stage one entry burn has started. There's the start of the burn. This will last for several more seconds. We'll shut it down. And then we'll wait for the landing burn and the second stage headed into orbit. We have shutdown of the landing burn. Let's turn it back down to the floor and see how things are going there. Okay, so the entry burn was at 6.45 on the clock at 100 miles altitude, so 
It's coming in at 5,000 miles per hour. Now imagine slowing that rocket from 5,000 miles per hour to zero in exactly how long? Well, we'll check when it lands. For a good time, though, here shortly, I'll let you know when. Keep an eye on this guy on the left. Uh, he'll actually put a funny look on his face for some reason and uh, look pretty hilarious for a while. So I'll let you know when to start doing that. It starts about now. And then what we're going to see here shortly is they're going to get, of course, verbal confirmation again. Again, audio cues that the craft is about to land. And then, of course, the magic begins. Again, if it was just one time that we got this peekaboo landing, that's one thing. But every single landing, SpaceX proves this hoax. You're not right. expecting uh, a successful attempt at this time around. So we are but we're hopeful. learning, we're always hoping. <laughs> and you're hearing everyone's here right now. Because coming into the drone ship, we will show you where we came right there. And that's a view from our drone ship in the middle. So, as is the norm, we get the interrupted feed. And you'll also notice the lights are on and very bright. And then all of a sudden there'll be a flash and abracadabra, the rocket landing. Yep, it's all nothing more than a magic trick. Sure, you'll have people like Red's Rhetoric or Astronomy Live telling you how it's 100% real because they are filming it. As if I should be surprised that these guys can't see how all of these people here at this magic show in the front row are about to have pictures and videos of a car appearing out of nowhere. However, they will understand that that is magic. But rocket launches? There's no way. They must be real. I mean, look at everything that spaceflight has given us. How could it be fake? Are you saying that they've only done it just to steal our money? Well, if that were true, then all we'd be able to see is them taking money year after year and giving us promises and wishes and ideas, but never following through on any of it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be getting a message here pretty quick from that guy in the front row there who's going to challenge me that this is definitely a real event, that he has film and photos showing that that car appeared out of nowhere. Uh, what should I do? It's going to be tough to prove it's not. Jaronism presents Next Level Genius. Next Level Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Less Than Minimum Wage Billionaire Who Doesn't Get Overtime. Mr. Minimum Wage Billionaire Doesn't Get Overtime. Are you motivated <clears throat> beyond just profit motive and racking up dollars and yeah uh, no i'm a volunteer i mean i don't need the money um there's nothing i i mean i it's not like i'm sitting here saying i wish i could buy such and such a thing i could buy it i um, pay cash for my two pay i get paid minimum wage actually i don't even get overtime you should be familiar with the labor law um so um but so not being motivated is not the same as saying that i think spacex shouldn't make money in fact it's very important that spacex is profitable or we'll not be able to earn money necessary to continue. Thank you, Mr. Less Than Minimum Wage with no overtime guy. We're now going to be watching SES-10, a launch from just last week. And as I said, the cheering you hear is from employees who probably get a bonus for actually showing up and cheering like maniacs. Because realistically, if it was actual fans, it would be the equivalent of a bunch of us getting together and going down to a construction site 
and then cheering like crazy because the guys are pouring concrete. Yeah! yeah. Pour concrete. that concrete! Concrete! Yeah. Oh, concrete. let me see the roll. You concrete. see the pitch and roll? Concrete. They're rolling. Yes! Yes! Second stage hardening! It's second stage hardening! Halo Tony has successfully separated. The MVAC engine continues to power the upper stage into the lower parking orbit. Engine looks good. Their trajectory looks good. We're at T plus four minutes, and the flight continues to be go. Those grid fins there are actually made of aluminum. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And of course, the second stage is on its way to orbit, and the first stage that's on its left is on its way to the drone ship. Of course, I still hate your guts, you dirtball liars. Now, listen as they begin to set up the magic trick, trying desperately to tell you why it is that we probably won't get any video. Have a listen. We're going to try and narrate that for you as, as, as much as we can. Uh, we also might lose the video feed of the first stage as it relands on the drone ship, as we have seen happen before. Uh, you can see that first stage coasting back right now. Uh, sometimes we do three boon burn maneuvers, uh, doing a boost back burn and then a uh, re-entry burn and a landing burn. Today, we're just doing a re-entry burn and a landing burn. So what we're doing is we're catching that first stage with the drone ship uh, as it makes its way out on a parabolic trajectory over the Atlantic Ocean. Exactly. Now, since planet Earth is a sphere, uh, as the rocket descends onto the drone ship, we lose the horizon. As it goes over under the horizon line, the ground stations may lose the communication feed with the drone ship. So we're going to hopefully bring you live footage. We see what you see, uh, and hopefully we'll all see it a successful landing once again all together. Uh, we do have cameras on the deck of, of course, I still love you, uh, but they're on a satellite link. Uh, so again, those vibrations from that first stage coming down may uh, jostle the satellite link so we can't uh, get all the video all the way down, just be prepared for it. Um, but right now we are uh, still tracking that. Perhaps SpaceX is a little bit behind the times. Maybe they've never heard of like a gimbal device that you could put the camera in that would actually have it not even notice that the drone ship was vibrating. You could get full video and maybe they've never heard of having multiple video cameras. Um, sometimes they have helicopters, but only when they want them. Can't have it on the day that they're going to drop it on the uh, drone there. Of course, I still hate your guts, you dirty liars. And we hear the call out. We have sport of entry burn. This burn will last just under 20 seconds. And shut down. Entry burn it looks like we've got a good burn. This is such a sad hoax. How many times are they going to mention the drone ship name of, of course, I still hate you, you dirty liars? And how often are they going to make excuses for the fact that no video feed will be present due to the shaking of the ship or due to the curvature of the earth or some other nonsense? And it, the whole hoax isn't even done well. You can watch this girl's face as soon as they find out or see that it's landed. Watch the two hosts look at each other. They are at war with their inner beings because they know something is up. As you just heard and saw, uh, the first stage's uh, re-entry burn has just completed. It uh, looks like the video isn't moving right now. Like we said, we're going to have some difficulty getting video as it makes its way uh, down the underneath the horizon from our ground stations. Um, but coming up very soon is going to be that landing burn. That's the final burn that happens just a few hundred feet off the deck of our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Yeah. Now, that drone ship you see on the right-hand side of your screen, that is live footage. Uh, and like we said, it's out in the Atlantic Ocean. So we're going to try and maintain that steady feed as the rocket descends, which is just in a couple of seconds here. Um, like I said before, literally just four or five seconds after we have stage landing, we should have um, indication that as to the second engine cutoff, meaning that the second stage with SES-10 is in good orbit. But right now, we're just watching our screen here, waiting to, to see the...
looks like we may not have a continuous video feed from the drone ship right now. Like we said, uh, this, this is expected. Um, we don't currently have direct line of sight with that drone ship. Uh, we only have a satellite link, and as it gets down uh, kind of close, uh, the, those engine, that Merlin engine uh, can vibrate the satellite link. And sometimes we can lose video. Uh, so just stay put here. We're going to let you know. You should see by now the absolute obvious hoax that is SpaceX. If not, keep watching. I'm betting by the end of this video you'll be on Team FakeX, not Team Fanboy Scream for Nothing. And up next, we have Mr. Next Level Genius himself. Pay attention, he doesn't know he's going live to begin. And uh, when he leaves, it's pretty funny as well. Enjoy. Three, two, one, zero. All right, well, we just had an incredible day today. Uh, the first reflight of an orbital class booster um, did its mission perfectly, dropped off the second stage, uh, came back and landed on the drone ship uh, right in the bullseye. Uh, it's an amazing day, I think, for space uh, as a whole, for the, sp for the space industry. It means you, you, can, uh, you can fly and refly an orbit-class booster, which is the most expensive part of the rocket. Uh, so this is going to be ultimately a, a huge revolution in spaceflight. Uh, it's the difference between uh, if you had airplanes where you, you threw away an airplane after every flight versus you could reuse them multiple times. Um, so it's been 15 years to get to this point, it's taking us a long time. Um, a, a, lot of, a lot of difficult steps along the way, but um, I'm just incredibly proud of the SpaceX team for being able to, to uh, achieve this um, incredible milestone in the history of space. Um, and um, yeah, I'm sort of at a loss for words, but it's, it's really a, a great day, not just for, for SpaceX, but for the space industry as a whole, improving that something can be done that many people said was impossible. Thank you. Jeronism presents Next Level Genius. Next Level Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Cliche Saying Overly Repeating Guy. Mr. Cliche Saying and Over Repeating Guy. Well, it's like the Nike slogan, you know, just do it. Uh, that that's was you know, super original. Uh, you know, just showing up is half the battle. <laughs> just, you know, you, you got to try hard to do it, and don't be afraid of failure. Um, Ooh. But you also need to be rooted in reality, um, so you shouldn't... Yeah. It, it's easy to get high in your own supply. Smoke um, one if you got them. Um, uh, Scarface said. Um, you know, you, you, you've, you've got to... Can I get a name in? Not be afraid to innovate, but also don't delude yourself into thinking something's working when it's not. Um, or you're going to get fixated on a, on a bad solution. Um, Six of one and half a dozen of the other. Yeah, and I think also just just um, don't you know, don't be afraid of new arenas. Uh, you know, you can get a book, you can learn something, um, and and experiment with your hands. And, better you know, late than never. Make it happen. Find a way or make a way to. to Hindsight's twenty twenty. The world go round. will be all fair and love and beggars oh. can't be choosers. So instead you with Words of wisdom for Mr. Cliche saying an over-repeating guy. 
So, believe what you want, but next time, when SpaceX does another magic trick, maybe you'll think back and say, ah, Jaren told me so. Because it certainly seems like something's up with these landings. There's no reason why we should lose the video feed every time just at the second that the rocket hits the barge. So, till next time. Jaronism presents Next Level Genius. Next Level Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Boring as Hell, stater of the absolute obvious guy. Mr. Boring as Hell and stater of the obvious guy. Well, I mean, those are pretty different personalities, you know, between Gates and Jobs and Allison. And success. Uh, well, um, I think, uh, it, you know, uh, all... All three of those were technologists, but with different types of skills. Can I get a pillow? You know, Jobs was obviously very good with aesthetics, um, and uh, you know, he, he, he answered technology, of course, um, and he really answered what people wanted, even when they didn't know themselves. Crickets, crickets, crickets. And he was not afraid to you know, break boundaries, but like say, like. Gates would probably be better at. Uh, I'm so bored today. Uh, more engineering and technology than jobs, but not as good on aesthetics. I'm really damn close to blowing my head off. Um, but, I mean, for, for all of these guys, they're obviously very driven um, and they're very talented uh, and, uh, uh, and they're able to attract great people to build a company. I'd rather be on my period. But, I mean, it, 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 the, 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 like the. The, the ability to attract and motivate great people is critical to the success of a company. Because a company is I'm just about to prove gravity and jump out this window. To create a product or service. That's the purpose of a company. And I owe it all to Mr. Boring as Helen Sater of the Obvious Guy. Okay, let's think this out now. We're looking at an animation of the globe from SpaceX. And I really think that we need to logically kind of hash this out. So bear with me. They say to get into orbit, you have to be going 17,500 miles per hour. Okay. Now, anyone know how fast a normal bullet is? Well, a very fast bullet would be 2,000 miles per hour, so let's take that. So, at 2,000 miles per hour, how far do you think a bullet would travel in one second? Would it be a football field? How about four football fields? It's actually 10. So the answer is 10 football fields in one second with a 2,000 mile per hour bullet. So now this is where we can prove NASA, SpaceX, and fanboys are a little bit insane. Think about it. A rocket, and we're talking just a regular rocket going into orbit at 17,500 miles per hour. How many football fields do you think that rocket could go in one second? 40 football fields? 80 football fields? The correct answer is 86 football fields in one second. Really think about that for a second, and you might come to the same conclusion I have. And that conclusion is, and it's, let me see how I can say this nicely, is it's bullshit. I'm sorry, there's no way I can believe that. I feel like I'm being taken for a hoax. Just think about it. Do you really think a rocket with some jet fuel flying out the back can move a huge, heavy metal contraption at a speed of 86 football fields in one second? Well, if you believe in space travel and you believe in orbits and you believe in satellites and you believe in SpaceX and you believe in NASA and JAXA, Ross Cosmos, then you absolutely believe that there's a way that we can move craft set fast. To me, I just don't see it. Think about everything else that we see traveling at certain speeds. To me, I'm just not buying it. To me, when I watch the shuttle or a rocket take off, it seems to be crawling into the sky like a helium balloon. It is not moving at 83, 86 football fields per second. And then I see it disappear off into the distance, basically no different than an airplane. Granted, an airplane goes level to the ground, plane, and a rocket 
is an attempt to lie to your face, so it's launched way up high in the sky, and it kind of creates a parabola. And you can believe whatever you want, you can, and I'll believe whatever I want. But uh, what it comes down to is I certainly can't see ever believing in that until it's shown proof. And if you think that this is going into space at 17,500 miles per hour, good for you. SpaceX is hiring. Uh, I, on the other hand, am not. Jaronism presents Next Level Genius. Next Level Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. United States Ass Kisser and Extreme Novo Rich Guy. Mr. U.S. Ass Kisser and Novo Rich Guy. The United States is, is more open to new ideas than any country in the world. And, Prepare yourself uh, for genius. And, and I think it's, it's somewhat becomes somewhat of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that because the United States is open to new ideas, it attracted people from around the world who had new ideas. And so it becomes, a, <clears throat> you know, so now it's full of those people who, who like new ideas. <laughs> um, so most countries, that's not their reaction. Um, people tend to think, oh, that person did, did well because they, they screwed somebody else. Or they go um, in fake space. they try to rise beyond their station. That, that was really inappropriate of them to be so nouveau riche, uh, to use a French word. <laughs> um, if and, only you uh, wouldn't have taken the government money, then you would be no breach. Thank you, Mr. United States, as kisser and extreme subsidies. Jaronism presents Next Level Genius. Next Level Genius. Today, we salute you, Mr. You Shoulda Listened to Your Friends Instead of Being a Fanboy Guy. Mr. Shoulda Listened to Your Friends Instead of Being a Fanboy Guy. I, I had a lot of friends of mine try to talk me out of starting a rocket company because they thought it was crazy and one friend of mine made me watch a video of rockets blowing up. <laughs> Why didn't you listen? And you know, there were just lots of people who thought it was a really crazy idea and there was some people that had to your imaginary friend. And they, they tried to talk me out of it. And, um, but the thing is that the, the premise like that you're me out of it was, more. well, we think you're going to lose the money that you invest. I was like, well, um, that was my expectation anyway, so I don't really mind if I lose. You know, I mean, it's not mine, but I mean. Thank you for perpetuating space with your fanboy lies. Now, believe me, if the evidence was sufficient for me to believe in crazy jets or crazy rockets that go, basically. 10 times as fast as a speeding bullet, but weigh thousands of times more carrying human beings inside them, well, then I would believe it. But uh, this is the kind of thing we're given here on the screen as proof of space travel. You are free to believe whatever you want. If you want to believe that R2-D2 is dancing around in the blackness of space on its way to the ISS, feel free. I will not stop you. However, you will not catch me uh, joining you in that belief until I see evidence that proves it as true. I don't think some flimsy films that are always fuzzed over, snowed out. Go to the ISS Live and look at the past videos and you'll see 9 out of 10 of them are washed over in some purple or magenta it just simply doesn't make sense. It's 2017, and we still can't get an HD video of the Earth spinning from space. If that makes sense to you, then good for you. So be it. Enjoy it. I wish that I had uh, the same eyes that you did so I could see what you see, because I see something completely different. I see... A couple billion people who circumnavigated the earth east-west and basically one a Freemason a cousin of the Queen who circumnavigated north-south and took four years to do it something doesn't seem right about that I see so many other things that I just can't shake off I used to be able to but I can't anymore they're glaring when we're told that boats go over the curve but you can go out and test and see that they do not, that it is because of perspective, it should make you question 
why you were taught something was true when it is not? Why were we taught water goes down the opposite way in the southern hemisphere versus the northern if it's not true? So these are the many proofs that the globe Earth has held up for hundreds of years. And when you dig deep, you find out they are uh, not quite as proof positive as we were once taught. Jaronism presents Next Level Genius. Next Level Genius. Today, we salute you, Mr. Go to That Red Dot in the Sky Guy. Mr. Go to That Red Dot in the Sky Guy. First of all, it's not that I personally want to go to Mars. It's just that, as I said, I think it's extremely important that uh, life become multiplanetary. Mars and, and so, is you might fake. say, well, why do I think it's important? Um, you know, aren't there lots of important things going on on Earth um, that should be, can't get enough should of be addressed? This and, and certainly there are. And it's not, I don't mean that it's Take your to CGI all, images all things, to Toontown. It's just that it makes sense to spend a small amount of our resources on, on, on doing this. SpaceX, um, SpaceX. And the reason it's important is if you go to the nature of importance itself, how do you decide that anything is important? Um, well, the lens of history is a good way to filter, um, uh, you know, the, the really important stuff Days and the less important stuff. I'd love away. to see you sucked and, in and the let's, vacuum. I'd say you zoom up really far and look at the entire history of Earth, or history of life itself. Um, what are the important, uh, what are the most Elon important Musk elements in, in the history of life itself? Forget about the parochial concerns of humanity. Um, what would any any species, any intelligent species, say? Oh, those were really important items. Get your um, ass to who will. But um, go, extending life to another planet. Uh, is a huge quantum leap. You have to go hundreds of millions of miles across extremely hostile environments. Tell uh, Spock to, I said hello when you get to Vulcan. Um, completely unlike anything you've evolved to live on. Um, and um, that's just Space really a difficult problem. In fact, I think it's an impossible problem without the advent of con- consciousness. I do, I do yeah, want to go, yeah, go yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. to space. Um, and eventually, it would be really cool if I could go to Mars. Uh, that would be super awesome. Thank you, mister, but it's just a red dot in the sky, guy. So, there certainly is a ton of reasons not to trust what we've been told. Luckily, anything scientific should have a surplus of proof for us to use and to verify what we were taught. But unfortunately, many of us are finding out that's simply not the case. Look at these moon videos. Science is big mistake, requiring people to believe that they are true. Much like the joke of all science, evolution. Now watch these shots from Apollo 17. They are completely and totally a joke. Lastly, watch the Earth go by, and you should see that number one, NASA lies, number two, science lies, and number three, those who follow the religion of scientism lie. Period. At that point, well, we're on our own. You've got people like Reg Rhetoric claiming that his videos of the SpaceX and NASA launches are proof that those craft go to space. Can you believe that? You've got people like Wolfie saying that the sun rising at 90 degrees in the equator proves a globe. You got Zach Hubbard saying that you see boats going over the curvature. And lots more. You've got Dazza the cameraman actually claiming that this video, shown here, debunks the idea of convergence. This is the kind of nonsense that these guys put out. You'll hear Glober say that if we were on a flat Earth, that you would not see further as you went up higher. Yep, they actually say that. When clearly, you would. And Dazza proves that in his own video. Notice the black edge at the back of the board, and even the white edge. You can even notice the orange square in the last row. Lower your angle and watch the black disappear, then the white disappear, and finally the orange. So you may see lots of different debunks out there, but it doesn't mean that there's no other solutions. You could be like Wolfie and be blind to the fact that you could actually be fooled. He actually said to me that maybe someone could pull the wool over my eyes and bamboozle me with math and geometry, but that I don't understand that they could not do it to him. Pride comes before the fall. I recognize that. I know I can be fooled. In fact, I have been fooled. 
So now I can attack it from all angles. So these guys can't stand that I'm questioning their religion. All I can say is keep digging, keep searching, and making truth your goal and you will eventually find it. Rockets don't go 17,500 miles per hour. It's a hoax. To me, it's a big fat lie. But you have to go looking to find it. I'll leave you with two quotes from Al Hazen. The first one is, the duty of the man who investigates the writings of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads and attack it from every side. He should also suspect himself as he performs his critical examination of it so that he may avoid falling into either prejudice or leniency. Al Hazen. And the second quote, truth is sought after for its own sake. Finding the truth is difficult and the road to it is rough for the truths are plunge in obscurity. God, however, has not preserved the scientist from error and has not safeguarded science from the shortcomings and faults. If this had been the case, scientists would not have disagreed upon any point of science. Al Hazen. So guys, I'll remind you to be kind to one another and don't lie to each other and open your mind because there's truth inside. Until next time, this has been Jaronism. Peace.